All right, let's talk about this AEW show from Saturday night. Saturday night Dynamite with the Kenny Omega versus Jungle Boy main event. So I thought this show was great. I thought the main event. I thought there was there was a, a couple of really good segments on the show. I thought the main event was great. Uh, main event was. I was so happy that there was no ref bump. All all I, you know, I did not want to see a ref bump. Um, I'm I'm just so sick of world title matches with ref bumps because we get them over and over and over again. So we just had uh, just a clean pin. Kenny Omega won with a one winged angel. It was an excellent match. Uh, Jungle Boy looked great. Uh, Omega looked great. Um, you they know, actually I mean, literally opened the match by ejecting everybody that was going to stand around ringside. But they did and come back. They did come back at the end, but they only made it out to the ramp, and then they brawled to the back again. So they essentially teased giving you what you didn't want, but then not delivering it. So yeah, they actually thanks. gave you what you did want, yep. which was a clean match. And it was everything that you would have wanted from a match with the finish that they gave. Omega gave Jungle Boy... I mean, he gave him like 70% of this match. He just gave him big move, big move, big dive, near fall, reverse Hurricane Rana, spots off the top, just <laughs> sold for the guy, sold for the guy, sold for the guy. And then he killed him at the end and hit the one-winged angel and, and it was beat very, him. It was very reminiscent to me of his matches in Mexico um, when he had the match with um, the Kingo. And uh, what was the other one that he had? That was, uh, I think that was the one that was really good. Um and um uh, Laredo Kid too, um but yeah El Hijo del Vikingo who, who was actually you know probably did even more spectacular stuff than Jungle Boy did well did did do more but it was similar in the sense of the way the match was worked where you know it was it was a lot of what you would expect but um you know a lot of stuff crossed up as well I mean he he gave you know Jungle Boy did. Got one really great near fall. He got the snare trap at one, at a couple, actually two points in the match. But Omega, you know, made the ropes and um, no no table breaks, right? They and gouged his eyes and pulled his hair, which was a spot that they set up literally at the very beginning of the match when he was messing with the guy's hair at the start. So, yeah, yeah, it was. Um, it's funny when you watch it, and uh, I know some people will hear this and go, ah, I'm not saying this is a criticism, I'm just pointing this out. Roman Reigns and Kenny Omega are two completely different styles of world champions. One is a guy who has been the world champion for nine months or whatever, and he goes in there, and even though he defeats everybody, he gives them everything and makes them look like future champions, like he did here with Jungle Boy. Like Nobody could watch this match and not think that one of these days Jungle Boy is going to be the champion. The Roman oh, Reigns I mean, I mean, I mean it, he, he, he definitely made Jungle Boy look like a star. I don't know that people really think Jungle Boy's going to be a champion, although I, I would presume someday he will. But, um, you know, like, he, I, I wouldn't, like, like, this was one of the better TV matches of the year as far as U.S. television goes. I would not say it was as good as the Kenny Omega Phoenix match. That match was, was awesome, awesome, awesome. This match was, this match was excellent, too. I mean, it was really, really good, but, but, um, you know, like, uh, I mean, you know, Ray Phoenix is better than Jungle Boy. There's your answer. Jungle okay, so Boy. My point. Let me get back to my point. Okay. Roman Reigns, on the other hand, works the match, and this is not on him. This is the way they book him as champion, where he just crushes everybody. Yeah, he leaves and him for dead. The storyline is that everybody, nobody is any match for Roman Reigns. And well, well, Kevin, it, Kevin Owens was booked as a match for Roman Reigns, but he never could beat him. I know, but, but he was crushed and he was defeated and he was just well, not at the not at not at the no, 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 no. Kevin Owens, Kevin Owens nearly in, the, in that last man standing. Kevin Owens nearly beat him several times, but well, yeah, because and, and, they, and he had, they had legitimate he, screw ups. Yeah, but I mean, it wasn't Kevin Owens, booked he, that they couldn't get the handcuffs out and the referee had to stop yeah, yeah, but, counting. Yeah, but even so, they still gave him that though. You know, some some big spots, and he did have the guy beat before. You know, the 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 interference spots and things like that before Jay. In a lot of cases. You know, in in the uh, and this actually happened for both, but with Roman Reigns, he did give challengers a lot in their matches in the sense that Jey Uso would have to help save him. I mean, in, in match after match, there was the Jey Uso interference, but he did not. Um, when all was said and done, I would say Kevin Owens was a guy who he beat, who Kevin Owens looked stronger in. Rey Mysterio certainly no, Daniel Bryan and Edge no. 
Um, I mean, so he most- may have looked stronger in the feud, but when it was over, Kevin Owens was in the exact same place that he was before. He was no bigger of well, a star hopefully- afterwards. Well, well, yeah, he was yeah, because they didn't follow up. Um, but, I mean, they followed up in the sense that they gave Kevin Owens match after match, and then when it was over. You know what's interesting is Kevin Owens was, was talking, what, like Monday, about uh, he's going to be taking time off, and now he's back next Friday. Yeah, they announced him for a match next Friday. Yeah, against Sami Zayn. That surprised But anyway, me. The, the point of this all is that Jungle Boy, when this was over, he was a bigger star coming out of it than he was going in. Yes, and but I know that you have asked many they, times for him to get his big win. And they still I think have to do that, a follow-up. They still have well, to do a follow-up, though. Yes, I think that what a good follow-up would be, not immediately, but at some point in the next several months, is his first big championship win should be over Miro. Agreed, 100%. I, I agree. And, and probably not for about six months, four months, you know, down the line. I, I would say at least four months. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not not right yet. I think that they need, you know, the one thing that they need to do. I always say this, and they've they've done it once, but they don't do it enough. Is have that upset, you know? And it's like they could have. They could. I mean, like I know why they didn't do it with Dante Martin because they wanted to set up um, Andrade against Matt Seidel, and the logical thing to set that up is for Matt Seidel to get the win. So it was Matt Seidel's turn to win this week. But um, that's that's a win, like in two months, where I would I would book that match again, and I would have Dante Martin go over because you need to do one of those things where you know obviously Brian Pillman Jr. is wrestling Miro, and that that's not the time to do it. But but the, it, it, but w- something like that, and it, we're we're pretty much due for another one of those wins, and it really should be one that people don't see coming because. Um, you want to you don't want to be you don't want people to feel like they can predict everything. I mean AW is predictable because it's logical. You know what I mean? It's like like I know that like it would have been a big surprise if Jungle Boy won, but it probably would have done him more harm. And I I tell you when I was watching the match, it was like I mean like if if Jungle Boy was going to win and then have a one year run as champion, it's one thing, but if you know, but I didn't think they were going to do that. And if and anything like if Jungle Boy won and had a two month run or a three month run even um, three month run I wouldn't say would do him more harm than good two month run I think would have done him you know one or two months would may have been more harm than good because you just don't want the baby face to get his big win and then have it mean you know people look back and go well it really meant nothing it's got to be meaningful so um, you know and this wasn't the time to do that they probably have you know Adam Page's obviously being groomed for a big match and perhaps Eddie Kingston Christian Cage is hope you know hopefully in about a month you know or so they do that that match as a TV champ you know TV match uh title match on TV I don't it's too early to do the pay-per-view and he's not the right guy for the pay-per-view anyway um you know and I don't know that it's Adam Page but you know they keep giving Adam Page big wins so I think it is you know and they teased it from before so it's feeling to me like it's Christian Cage and then Adam Page. And then, uh, you know, and maybe Eddie Kingston, you know, is certainly there. And, and perhaps Pac as well. You know, there, there's, there's, put it this way. On AEW, I can name guy after guy after guy who's already built up for a championship match that only needs a win or two and an angle to get one. And with like... uh you know, with with SmackDown, it's like Edge, not, not nothing knocking about Edge being a star, but the last time he was in the ring with Roman Reigns, he got racked up, stacked up, and that whole bit. And it's kind of like, that's not exactly what you do to a guy who's, uh, you know, gunning for the, the big championship match in two months. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.